I V M. This week's episode of Edges and Sledges is brought to you by Seat Tires, and we wanted to tell you a little bit about their Secura Drive and their Puncture Safe Tires. For those of you who drive, Seat Secura Drive is a tire with an added layer of safety, offers a much higher degree of control and grip even at high speeds. And for those of you who ride, Seat's premium Puncture Safe tires, as the name suggests, are less prone to flats and leaks. I mean, whoever has the time to deal with annoying flat tires, right? And now on to your show. Welcome to another episode of the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast, powered by Seat Tires. We have a full house today, and we are recording right after India has just won our phenomenal series against England at home and has qualified for the World Test Championship Finals. So, DJ Varun, thanks for joining me. DJ, let me start with you. Pretty exciting, right? I mean, it's one of those things that we predicted it, and still, it's pretty exciting when it happens. Yeah, first up, talking about predictions. Um, congratulations to Varun for predicting the three-one scoreline in this test series and getting that absolutely right. So well done. Coming to the World Test Championship final, I think you're right that it somehow felt like we were always destined to make it. It was destined to happen. But when you look back at the last two and a half years, right, the journey has been absolutely immense. Uh, we were top of the tree before the pandemic hit. Then the rules changed, and then every test match we played assumed a greater significance. We needed a lot of pieces of the puzzle to fall into place to qualify. Every match counted. The win at Melbourne, the draw at Sydney, the win at the Gabba on the Australia tour. I mean, even if one of those results had gone against India, India would have had needed to win this England series at home 4-0, which, as we now know, didn't actually happen. So, every single game has counted. It's gone right down to the last game of the World Test Championship to work out who the finalists are going to be. So for me, that's been an absolutely brilliant advertisement for the game of Test cricket. Of course, the World Test Championship has its flaws, but I think that's a debate for another day. Right now, very very proud of Team India for making the first ever World Test Championship final, and I think we feel particularly vindicated that um, Rishabh Pant has played such a huge part in this team qualifying. I mean, for me, this fourth Test match is really really special, a real coming of age moment, a coming of age innings for uh, our boy Rishabh Pant, and I'm not sure how long we're going to be able to call him our boy because uh, it looks like that boy is slowly <laughs> becoming a man. So. Really, really happy at the moment. Yeah, Varun. Let me ask you. We normally wait till probably ten, fifteen minutes in before we talk about Seat Player of the Week. Should we just start letting our listeners know at this point that one of the two Seat Awards of the Week is going to go to Rishabh Pant? Is it a done deal? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we are the Rishabh Pant show after all, so we should give as many awards as possible to him. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty phenomenal. So, Varun, let me ask you before I go back to DJ about this match. Did has the World Test Championship given us added? Context. I remember when it started. This was new, right? We didn't have this a year ago. We didn't have this, you know, when we were growing up. Has it just given added value or context, or do you think, you know, Kohli sort of alluded in a press conference to the fact that the team is motivated; they want to win anyway. But for the fan, does it have, does it help that there's now a final to look forward to? Yeah, I mean, any final is always good to look forward to, and India has reached the semis a lot in previous tournaments, but not the final. So it's a good uh, thing for us to have. It's just. I, I, I mean, I think the rules changed midway. The World Test Championship this is the first time. People are still getting used to it. I often wonder what will happen at the Lords if it's a, you know, a Trent Boat special and he blows us away in two and a half days. Uh, do we lose the World Test Championship just based on one series? What happens if it's a draw? So there's a lot to do. I personally would have liked to see a three-match series as the World Test Championship final, but it's exciting nonetheless. Are you predicting that Trent Boat will have India 15 for three on the first day of the World Test Championship final? Yeah, I think 100 all out. All right, let's talk about the fourth test, celebrate that a little. We have plenty of time to preview the World Test Championship final. DJ, all the talk between matches, after the match, before the match, during the match has been about two things, really. The pitch and selections. Let me start with selections for you, right? England, at the toss announced, were leaving out both Broad and Jofra Archer from the previous match. They brought in Dom Bess and Daniel Lawrence, which is interesting, right? You brought in one arguably like for like in terms of a bowler. And then you've dropped one fast bowler to bring in an out-and-out batsman. I think Dan Lawrence bowled some uh, domestic off-spin, but he, he didn't bowl in this game. Talk me through the thought process there. Again, one of those things that in hindsight we'll say didn't work, obviously. But to, to leave out two of your you know most well-known quicks 
and bring in a spinner who's out of form and a batsman. What was the thinking? Yeah, very interesting thought process there. But I think there's a game of 4D chess that India has been playing with England all throughout. I mean, Dom Bay should have played the third test match with the amount of spin there. But we saw on the first day that there was quite a lot of seam movement. And I mean, England only went in with two seamers in this game, playing Dom Bess after dropping him in the second test match, not playing him in the uh, two test matches where it spun big. Suddenly, he was brought in for this test match. He didn't bowl particularly well, but he do feel a little bit for the kid. I mean, he's uh, suddenly been thrust into the limelight with Moin Ali flying back to England. There was chat about uh, Moin Ali being asked to stay back and... Uh, not go back uh, to England so that he could continue playing. That would have played in Dombas's mind. Dombas hadn't done very much wrong in the first Test match and then got dropped. So, a tough um, tour for the, the, the young man. And um, then Dan Lawrence, I mean, that worked, right? That selection worked. And thinking behind that must have been, surely, that, listen, ever since the second innings at Chennai, we haven't scored any runs against spin. And so, Dan Lawrence, who looked okay against spin, to be honest, in Sri Lanka, and scored some runs. He was the only English batsman to get pretty much any runs other than Stokes in this game. So, I mean, that selection worked. But what it left England with was basically Stokes and Jimmy Anderson opening the bowling. Stokes looked quite unfit while he was bowling almost. Um, a lion-hearted effort, but... Um, threw the balance off a little bit by not playing those bowlers on what was a decent pitch for seam bowling, to be fair. Yeah, so Varun, let's come to that, right? Joe Root won the toss, chose to bat first, which for many, many, many series, we've been saying win toss, win match in India. It feels like this, again, it's a big double standard, but 205 for 10, right? Bairstow actually did okay. And he looked shake, very, very shaky, but did okay. And then really, I mean, Stokes himself made a nice looking 50 by the end of it. Dan Lawrence made 46, but... You know, 205 dismissed all out before the end of the first day's play in Ahmedabad. Was was that it? Was that just not good enough? Or you've said before that you don't judge a pitch till both teams bat. Yeah, I think it just wasn't good enough. All the English pundits finally came out and did say that they just didn't play well enough. I think the unfortunate thing for England is that they just lost wicket at regular intervals, right? Nobody was able to build a partnership. I thought Dan, Dan Lawrence batted extremely well. Stokes, of course. But... They just, they just couldn't all come together. I want to say spirited bowling by Siraj as well. He did really well, in my opinion. And then, of course, Akshar and Ashwin are just going to clean them up. DJ, let's talk about Siraj, right? At this point, you could argue and our Discord server, which for those who haven't joined it yet, is a great place to just chat more cricket, even if you need more about it. But has, the Discord was arguing or discussing, rather, who's going to make the, the World Test Championship finals from a bowling standpoint if we have a full full strength team. And you could argue before this series that the first three choice of quick bowlers are Bumrah, Ishant, and Shami. There are some now saying the top three picks should be Bumrah, Siraj, and Shami leaving Ishan Thad because he's kind of at the tail end of his career. Talk me through that. Who are your who are your first three the choices of quick bowlers? And and has Umesh and Bhuvi have just they just are they all just done? Yeah, so interesting problem to have, a problem of plenty, which we'll come to on the spin side of things as well. But I mean, Bumra, Ishant and Shami is just a, a pace attack, which is just fantastic. They combined for over like a hundred wickets in 2018, right? Which was uh, I mean, a, a brilliant performance by these three seamers. So, Siraj is a great backup. But for me, given the experience these uh, gents have of bowling in these conditions and pretty much uh, running through the English team on the last uh, tour, I would say, I mean, Ishant, Bumrah and Shami walk into that uh, World Test Championship final as well as the first test against England, which will be later in the summer. So, uh, good to have Siraj as a backup. Bhuvi, Umesh, I mean, Saini as well. But those guys, Bhuvi... Uh, accepted, don't really have that much experience in English conditions. So, you're playing a big game. Uh, of course, talent and youth and all of that matters. But experience, priceless, man. So, uh, those three are the top three seamers for me in those conditions. Yeah, well said. I mean, like, absolutely a good problem of plenty. And speaking of the problem of plenty, Varun, let me ask you about the spin bowlers then, right? Ashwin picked up three, Akshar picked up four, uh, Sundar actually got on the board this match with the wicket. Uh, he did in the last match too, but he only got four balls to do it. But let's talk through that, right? What happens for Team India when Jadeja is back? What happens to the idea about a bringing in a wrist spinner? You know, who who are India's first choice spinners? And do people like Akshar and Sundar say thank you, great season, got us some phenomenal wins, and then and then go back to the domestic circuit now? Yeah, I think so. I think Jadeja would come back in. I, I personally do believe a third spinner is always redundant. 
So I don't think India is going to be playing three spinners, especially not overseas. So I think it's just these guys are young. They have to keep going. We saw in the Australia series the number of injuries that happen. So India needs to have that bench strength. And let's be honest, Ashwin and Jadeja maybe have another three, four, four years to go. But after that, these guys are the future. So they're in a good position. I think they just shouldn't get restless if they don't get the next match. Yeah, very interesting, right? I mean, it, we've seen it with Karun Nair. We've seen it with, you know, a few players, Jayant Yadav over there, who come in and do a, put in a big performance for India and then and then hard, find it very hard to claw themselves or their way back into the into the side. But let's come back to this match then. 205 all out, 75 overs. DJ, Rohit and Gill walk out. Anderson bowls two balls and then he bowls the third and it wraps Shubman Gill on the pad. We knew it. We knew it was good. We knew it was out, but... But so painful, right? This this young talent who replaced his his friend and opening partner at the under nineteen level in Prithvi Shaw in the in the side. We all, you know, the way he was batting in Australia, we started thinking and dreaming about future captain of India. Talk us through this, right? Is it is it a mental thing for Shubman? Is it he's better overseas than at home, like a Rahane, or what, what what's going on with Shubman Gill? Uh, he's had a disappointing series, right? I mean, he he came in with all that promise and, I mean, delivered on that promise, to be honest, in, in Australia. But the pitches were different there. They didn't spin as much. The, I think I pointed out a little while ago that he did have that little shuffle to, towards leg stump even when he was doing well. So, he didn't quite cover the line of off stump, didn't really quite get behind the line. But that was his method, right? Obviously, if you come against the class of an Anderson and Broad and Jofra Archer and these guys, these guys will pick the chinks in your armour and uh, he has been he's been unlucky even in this game to be honest he had a few umpires calls go against him you could see the disappointment on his face he was like this is the best probably one of the best batting surfaces of the series and he didn't get a chance in the second inning so I mean you do feel for the kid a little bit he's in there all the time at short leg getting hit taking catches and I mean, he he does fit into the fabric of this team very well. So, I like to give him a proper run at the top. But, I mean, the nature of Indian cricket is such that you've got this revolving doors of openers and batsmen. You've got this wealth of Mayank Agarwal and Prithvi Shaw's breathing down your neck. And um, you can have all the talent in the world, but uh, it's got to translate into runs. And I hope, I mean, we, we don't have a short-term memory, right? This guy scored 91 at the GABA contributed to that victory, scored 45, I think, at Melbourne, scored runs at Sydney. He looks good, but he needs to get a score. Similar to kind of what's happening with uh, Rahane a little bit, right? Like there are questions about his, his batting, but there's no question about their class. So, um, look forward to seeing some runs from him in the future. Yeah, well said. I mean, it, it is a very, very difficult spot and, and we can talk more about Indian team selection as it goes. But Varun, if we were chasing, what did they make, 205? Right. And you told me we were 40 for two and in walks the skipper. By the way, the craziest thing that when the second wicket falls, the crowd starts cheering. It's the, the most bizarre yeah. phenomenon. It's been going on for three, four decades in India since Sachin started playing. Right. When when the second batsman gets out, they know that Sachin was going to walk in or Kohli's going to walk in and crowds go crazy. But Kohli walked in, lasted seven balls. And on the eighth, he edged one to Ben Stokes. What was the feeling when England made 205 and India was at 41 for three? That's a scary place to be, right? Yeah, that is, and that's because of the World Test Championship, like we mentioned earlier. If uh, a draw series wouldn't hurt as much, but in this situation, a draw series would have really hurt us. So, I think there was always that little bit of hope that an Ashwin and a Sundar, Akshar, Pant can get us to 205. But, I, I mean, I thought it was quite unacceptable for India to be, what, 120 for five? Uh, chasing 205 on day two. So the top order has just not done well enough. Pujara hasn't done much. DJ said Gill hasn't stood out. Kohli, I mean, he's he's King Kohli, but he's just not done enough. So it's a little bit scary that in India, if your top order doesn't do well, I'm not sure what's going to happen uh, overseas. But as always, the bottom half of the team really kind of pulled it together. Yeah, that's as, as good a time as any to talk about our boy and the... And the, the incredible bottom half of the batting lineup. So as Varun said, 121 for five. It went to 146 for six when Ashwin got out as well. And then Rishabh Pant and Washington Sundar. DJ, let me come to you first about, about Rishabh Pant, right? I joked about it. I think we can keep one recurring Seattle Player of the Week award for him. But he absolutely earned it this week, right? 
101 off 118 balls, paced his innings beautifully. His first 50 was slower. His next 50 came off just 33. He got from 94 to 100 off with a six. I mean, Virinder Sehwag got excited about it. Was it on the action on Twitter? Are we running out of words to describe Rishabh Pant? So all the investment we've put into Rishabh Pant, all the airtime we've given him talking about his mind, his technique, he was, he was always an outrageous talent, right? He was always that out. That's what excited us about him. But this innings, I mean, I think Ravi Shastri came out and said it. Rohit Sharma came out and said it, that this was Rishabh Pant's best innings. This is this is an innings where he's come out where India are in a bit of trouble. He's joined Rohit Sharma. Rohit Sharma goes. Uh, we're 125 for five. Uh, we're 146 for six when Ashwin goes. And at that point, you are staring down the barrel of conceding a first innings lead to England and possibly conceding them the complete advantage to the game. And this guy, I mean, we know he can hit sixes. We know he can hit fours. He's exciting to watch. But he has just controlled that natural urge. He's recognized the moment. And that is what, I mean, great players do. You can score a thousand runs on a flat wicket in uh, the West Indies and that doesn't make a difference, right? It's when you come out with performances like you come, come out at Sydney, you come out at Gabba, you come out at Ahmedabad. These are the things that you remember. And I mean, it's it was something else watching this guy play within himself. And then when he exploded, it was just, it was pure joy, right? And he's gone through his ups and downs. But for this week, I mean, I don't think anyone is going to argue that Rishabh Pant has to be our CR Secura Drive Player of the Week. Pant batted within himself with immense control, accelerated at the exact right time. And he's a batsman that performs on all surfaces like the CR Secura Drive tyre. Be it Sydney, the Gabba, Ahmedabad. And I mean, a big thanks to Archit, one of our listeners and the host of the Nankari podcast who gave us this um, idea. But I mean, just so, so happy to give the uh, CR Secura Drive Player of the Week award to Rishabh Pant this week. Just beautiful. Just so feel so vindicated backing the guy through his tough times. Yeah, well said. I, you know, and by the way, great job with that that integration. That was some some serious thinking that went into the CR integration. So nicely done. Varun, I want to ask you. We could spend the whole episode talking about Pant. I promise I will try not to. But I want to ask just about one thing. Right at 101, he had just hit a six to get a century. He got to 101, and then he got out. And as he's walking off, he's like. He's punching his glove. He's smashing his bat into his pad. He's angry. He's upset. And what I want to question is, he did that when he was when he got out in the 90s in Australia. And this time he got to his milestone and still did that, right? So is that a reflection of a guy who's, it's not, a, it was, it's never about the 100. It's not about, hey, I made 97. I want to make those extra three. In this case, he made the extra three. He was still arguably just as angry walking off. It's more... The guy saying, "I was set, and I want to. I want to make more and more and more and more runs for my team every day, and take my country over the finish line." Is that how how you read that? I think people like Pant and Sevag are just the kind of people who, as the game progresses, to them every ball is a bad ball. So when you're in that situation and Jimmy Anderson is bowling and you reverse sweep him for four off a new ball, which is just outrageous, audacious. Like I don't even know how to describe that. And you bring up your century with a six. I just think you're seeing the ball so well that you are going to be upset with yourself. And Rohit Sharma said it that he said two interesting things. One is he said that uh, you know Pant is playing extremely well, and we you know he's going to play some bad shots that'll give him runs and some bad shots that'll get him out. So don't blame him for the ones that'll get him out. And the second thing is he actually told Rishabh Pant. He said we don't need you to think. We just need you to go and play the way you're playing. So there's enough people around you to think. And I think that's the confidence that the team has. Rishabh Pant just seems like he wants to bat. And like I said, after a point, every ball seems like a bad ball to him. Can I just mention quickly two shots? Varun's obviously talked about the absolutely insane, mad, premeditated reverse sweep over slip, which was, I think, even Jimmy Anderson had a wry smile on his face. But the other two shots I want to mention is him coming down the track first ball with the new ball. And that statement that was made to Jimmy Anderson, who'd had a brilliant spell, up until then, right? Him, both him and Stokes. We must recognize Rohit Sharma batted brilliant against against them in the first session, and Rishabh Pant making that statement was smashing a all time great like Jimmy Anderson down the ground first ball with the new ball, just fantastic. And the second one, you talked about getting to uh, his hundred with a six, and all of this is happening in like his eighties and nineties. Remember, getting to his hundred with a six. He's on the ground, almost overbalanced, and he's hit it with one hand over mid-wicket. 
I mean, yeah, there is no other way that this guy would have gone to a six. He's been out on 97. He's been out on 91. He made 89 at the Gabba. He doesn't care. He, he's not there for the milestones. He's there to make his team win. So, um, so proud of Rishabh Pant and so happy for him. I mean, the joy was writ large on his face. So, so, so happy. Yeah, really well said. And and to your point, right? A lot of players are talented at this level, but making those statements, playing with the bowler's heads, playing with a bowler like Jimmy Anderson's mind, just phenomenal. Just really, really great to see. We can talk about Rishabh Pant all day. We probably will, honestly, at some point. But for the sake of this episode, we're going to take a quick Seat Tire strategic timeout and we will be right back after these. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another great week on the IBM Podcast Network. If you aren't following us on social media, please do. We're IBM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We'd like to thank the sponsors on the network this week. See, Ed, we really do appreciate your support. We have a new show on the network. It's called The Fighting Goat. And if you love fighting sports, tune in every Wednesday with hosts Arjun and Somesh. They also featured, by the way, on Cyrus Says this week, where the three fitness freaks bonded over their love for TV sports and sports in general. Tune in to This Round is On Me, where Gauri celebrated her 25th anniversary with Kavita Rajwade, who is my co-founder at the IBM Podcast Network. They give us details about how this show was curated, and they talk about podcasts in general. On The Habit Coach, Ashton highlighted our addiction to screens, how we are glued to either a big laptop screen or a small mobile screen all day. He shared some tips on how to rectify this unhealthy lifestyle. On All Things Policy, Anirudh Kanisati spoke to Pratik Vakre and Rohan Shet about the new internet guidelines that were issued by the government of India recently and their impact on content creators and platforms. On the Filter Coffee podcast, Karthik invited Vivek Ram, who is a celebrated animation artist. They chatted about his stint with animation and starting his own studio called Vanur Sena, bringing to life stories from ancient India and his scriptures with animation as his vehicle. We had Dhanya Rajendran, the editor of the News Minute on The Note with Maru Kinayat. It was a deep dive into the digital newsroom and the upkeep of truth in a fake news pandemic. And with that, let's get you back to your show. Welcome back to the Edges and Sledges Cricket Podcast powered by Seat Tires. We've talked about the first innings and a half or so. We've talked about England underperforming with the bat yet again. India's top order, again underperforming. Four basically batsmen did did poorly through the series, except for Rohit, who stood up tall. We've talked about Rishabh Pan. Varun, let me ask you about his partner, right? The way cricket is designed, one batsman doing well means nothing. And we felt that this match, right? Rishabh Pant did well because he had support from Washington Sundar, who was batting magnificently. I mean, people who are new to the sport will watch and say, is this guy number eight? Is this how good number eights are supposed to bat? So 85 not out in the previous test, 96 not out here. Talk me through Washington Sundar. And is this guy really going to continue and spend the rest of his test career batting at number eight? Yeah, so Sundar for me, that's why this week when I thought about who's our Seat puncture resistant player of the week, it had to be Sundar. And the reason I say that is because even after his performance at the Gabba, I think when we discussed on this podcast, I'm not 100% sure, but I think only one of us said that he's going to play. So, you know, given the circumstances there, was that, was that he you? wasn't sure. I think so, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> um, I, he's, he, he, he may or may not have played. He played the first test. He got 85 not out. Then he got dropped for the second test. So imagine how demotivated he must be. He then came back and got two ducks. And then now in this match, when counted the most, when India needed him the most, he's come out with a 96 not out. So puncture resistant, I think Sundar defines that, especially for this week. His average was what? Over 90 in this, tor- in this series? If you think about it, with two ducks. So he was just fantastic. I don't think he can continue batting at number eight for long. I'm not sure how long of a run he'll get right now, but I've said this before. I have a feeling he could bat at number five or six for India in the future. And I think he will. He's just done well. And also, if I was Ash- Akshar, uh, Ashwin and Siraj, I or Akshar, Ishant and Siraj, I wouldn't want to meet his dad anytime soon. DJ, let his me ask you. His dad's a bit of a that, legend, right? man. The joke with <laughs> yeah, the joke with his dad after he got eighty five not out was just like, why didn't he make the century? And all of us who grew up with Indian parents, Indian families, and kind of Asian culture in general, it's like, hey, when you get that ninety nine, why did you lose the one mark? Not why not celebrating the ninety nine? And that's what Sundar's dad feels like, and he's still twenty one. Let's remember that. But especially because Sharma Ji can take out a century this game, this in this series. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, I mean, there's but you no... see, Washi's dad would have said, "Beta, you need to get 90 plus average." Didn't say whether to get in exams or whether to get in test match, man. Washi's got 90 plus average this series. Kya problem? But he man? still doesn't. Have, he still doesn't have a century, and Ajit Agarkar has a century, and that's unacceptable. Cent, cent percent. That is what Washi's dad wants. Cent percent. But let's let's <laughs> let me ask you about that. Like, how insane is it that he's batting on 96, and there and we're only seven down, and in the next five balls we lose three wickets. I mean, 
I hate Ben Stokes enough already, but him getting two wickets and four balls in that over, I mean, it just, of course he's doing his job, but it made me hate him so much more, right? I mean, you uh, you have to begrudgingly give Ben Stokes the respect as well. When he scored a 50, he was taking catches, he was taking wickets. So, I mean, there was a discussion online about, uh, online wing, uh, while they were commenting about, um, on commentary, whether he's the best all-rounder in the world. I mean, Jadeja didn't even figure in that conversation, which I found absurd. But I mean, he's definitely up there. But what I, I mean, Akshar, I can understand. I mean, he got run out, right? But like, Ishant, you would have expected Ishant to stick around. There were four runs to get. I have no faith in Siraj again. I mean, he was great when he stuck around with Ashwin. But, I mean, Siraj isn't a proper batsman. But Ishant has batted before. Ishant has batted for hours with VVS Lakshman to win as a test match, remember, against uh, Australia. So, I mean, unfortunate uh, washi. But, I mean, this guy wasn't playing test cricket. We have to remember that. He was not. He was a net bowler. And now he's looking like he's giving... Ravi Chandran Ashwin, Akshar Patel, maybe Hanuma Vihari, a run for his money at uh, number 5 or number 6 or even number 7 and being that off-spin, off-spinning all-rounder that uh, kind of batting all-rounder that we've been actually wanting. He took Ben Stokes' wicket in this game as well. So, I mean, so unfortunate to see him not get a 100 but you have to believe there is a 100 in the future for this boy very soon. His partners just need to hang around with him, right? I mean, he's. I, I think I mentioned that he is he the Indian version of Steve Smith. He may well be starting off as an off-spinning all-rounder, seen as a T20 specialist. I mean, look at what that Australia tour has brought out for Indian cricket. You would have never, in a in your wildest dreams, till two months ago, said Washington Sundar could be a regular in this Test team. You would have given him as a perfect example, which I think I may have actually given the example that this is a guy who can actually just focus on T20 cricket and just make that one format. But look at the talent we have at our disposal. Incredible. Just amazing. Yeah, I mean, the picture that did the rounds in Australia with Natarajan holding up the trophy at the GABA. The picture that's doing the rounds now is Akshar Patel picking up the trophy in Ahmedabad. And neither of those guys featured in our test plans three months ago. So it's been an unbelievable ride, an unbelievable journey. Varun, let me ask you about the, the England innings then, right? You have 160 to chase to get back into a deficit to force India to bat a second time. I think based on track record, no, none of us really thought they would get there. But, I mean, if India could make 365, the pitch didn't have as many demons as we thought, or the batsmen were able to negotiate it well. And then, again, right, fifth over, Zach Crawley comes and gets out. I specifically want to ask you about Johnny Bairstow, right? The claims before the series were best, in the England's second best player of spin, after Joe Root, of course. He did decently against Sri Lanka. He has now got six ducks in his last nine innings against India. Is this mental or is this just a, a case of we gave him more credit than he deserved? Or by we, I mean the English media. Yeah, so two things. I think firstly, England had lost this test before they even came out to bat in the second innings. Once they had got, once India had got such a large lead, I think 155 if I'm not mistaken. I think at that point, England, I mean, for them to come out, get over 155 and then you're going to have a situation where India is probably going to win by 10 wickets or in innings. And let's just remind everyone from all the pitch criticism, the last two games results have been 10 wickets and in innings. So, uh, it's been one side dominating the other. Johnny Besto, I don't know what he's doing. Like, he's either taking a review on the first ball that he's playing or he's getting out (laughs) on the first ball that he's playing. So, definitely a little hype. I like Besto. I've loved him at Sunrisers Hyderabad. I haven't followed him enough in test cricket, but I do think he's a good batsman. He's just probably got too many things going on in his mind, right? Like we said, there's, you know, you're opening, you're, you're an opening batsman. You're coming at one down for test cricket. You're expecting to play Siraj and uh, Ishan Sharma and suddenly you're playing Akshar and Ashwin. So I think that probably played on his mind a bit too much. And a lot of people have discussed this, Michael Vaughan as well. When the top three make, what, eight runs between them, it puts too much pressure on the, other, the rest of the team. Yeah, well said. I mean, off the top five, four had single digit scores. Top four, four of the top five made 10 runs between them. Just, just not good enough. But DJ, let me ask you, right? Spin bowlers often roll in pairs. I mean, pace bowlers too, right? You talk about Broad and Anderson and you, you talk about spin twins and spin pairs. And in ODIs for India for many, for a while, it was Kuldeep and Chahal. For us, it's always been Ashwin and Jadeja in tests, right? And we've talked about how one doesn't do as well when they're bowling alone, et cetera. But Ashwin and Akshar bowled 85 plus percent of the overs. Right? Ishant didn't get the ball. Siraj bowled four overs. Sundar bowled four. 
I can't remember the last time I saw all 10 wickets being taken split right down the middle by two guys, each picking up a fiver. I mean, it was just magnificent, right? They just spun this web, for lack of a better pun to use, but they spun this web around the, in the English batsman and it was so exciting to see, wasn't it? Oh yeah, it was, it was absolutely amazing. I think Ashwin picked up something like 32 wickets across the series. He even scored 100. Akshar Patel finally actually in the first innings went past the number of uh, test wickets he had with the number of test runs he had scored, which is, I mean, how many wickets? He's taken over 27 wickets in this series. I mean, I it's, it's 29, absolutely right? ballistic. 29. Did he take 29 wickets in this area? I mean, it's the numbers are mind-boggling between those two spinners. And at the outset of this series, what we had said was, the difference between the teams is going to be the quality of spinners, right? Joe Root completely negated that, partly aided by a, a flattish pitch in the first test of Ch- at Chennai. But when we saw the spinners really come into the game, second innings onwards, you saw the difference in quality between the Indian spinners and the English spinners. And I mean, Akshar Patel has given the Indian selectors a proper headache now. I mean, are you going to play him? Are you going to play Jadeja? Are you going to play Washington Sundar? Are you going to play Ashwin? Are you going to play Kuldeep? I mean, look at the options you've got. I was uh, chatting to somebody on Twitter and they were like, oh, uh, the World Test Championship final may not be at Lords. We'll move it to Durham and uh, in, in October 2021 and we'll see how they deal with the cold conditions. And you're like, bro, both Ashwin and Akshar Patel have played county cricket, right? Akshar actually played for Durham. So, I mean, that may actually play into his... Durham is, just by way of context, is the northernmost county. It's where Ben Stokes plays. It's super cold over there. It's like really uh, quite difficult conditions. So, Akshar Patel has played there and batted and scored runs in those conditions as well. So, he's giving us a proper headache to have as an understudy to come into Jadeja and to rival and perhaps surpass what Sir Jadeja would have done himself is just... It's an achievement which is, again, it's hard to put into words what Akshar Patel has done in the series. We have not missed Ravindra Jadeja. Other than the first test where we had Shabazz Nadeem, who did not uh, give us that control and um, that wicket-taking ability that uh, Jadeja gives. And Akshar filled in for that and more, man. Amazing performance by the boy. Yeah, really well said. In front of his home crowd too. Just It's his third 5-4. And you were right, sorry, the number was 27 for the series, not 29. I don't know where I had that in my head. But... But outstanding, right? So England perished to 135 all out. Both wickets or, or both bowlers, both spin bowlers took a, picked up a five for. I'm trying to count this really quickly. Varun, I thought I was done talking about Rishabh Pant, but not quite. He got three dismissals in that second innings. Let's quickly talk about his wicket keeping, right? We've talked about how he he was subpar in Australia. There were these moments, these visuals where Ashwin would bowl the peach, Pant would drop it, and then you'd see on Ashwin's face that this guy's not good enough. I think we've all on this show been saying He's going to learn. He's going to grow. Dhoni did not start as a great wicketkeeper, but he ended as a great wicketkeeper. You know, whether Rishabh Pant will get to that level, we'll see. But talk me through how you felt about Pant behind the stumps in this innings, both his keeping and his kind of chirping and talking. Yeah, I mean, it, it's been good. It's been really nice to see him come up, do a better job in wicketkeeping. Everyone said Saha is the keeper for India. But I don't think anyone missed Saha because he stood up to the challenge. He took some brilliant catches. He got a stumpings. In fact, he had one MS Dhoni type of flick at the stumps on the last day of the test match, which was almost scarily similar to the great man Dhoni. So give him time, let him, let him, you know, let him come into his own. You had Adam Gilchrist come out and say that he is uh, you know, he's gonna be one of the best wicket keeper batsmen. And by the way, there are only three wicket keeper, sorry, there are only two wicket keeper batsmen that have centuries in India, Australia, and England. The first is Adam Gilchrist. The second is Rishabh Pant. So at the age of 23, just remember that he's already achieved what no other wicketkeeper batsman has done before. His keeping will get better. He's going to work hard. He's already lost 10 kilos from the IPL where everyone was on him for you know, having put on too much weight. So just give him time. Let him enjoy himself. And yeah, it, I think it's as simple as that. That's it. That's as good a summary as that we can give you off the test series. We India won 3-1 qualified for the World Test Championship final. We will be talking plenty about the World Test Championship in the coming weeks and months because it's going to be very, very exciting. Nice to finish, not just qualifying, but at the top of the table. So very proud of Team India. DJ, anything to add on the test before we move to a couple other quick things? 
No, I mean, uh, Rishabh Pant sledging to Zach Crawley. I really enjoyed that when he says he's getting angry, he's getting angry. And then next ball, Zach Crawley comes out and hits a catch straight down to Siraj. So, I mean, he adds that X factor to uh, to our game, which I just I just absolutely love watching it. He, he's got, he's funny. He's like, he's uh, jesting with uh, Harsha Bogle, telling him, you guys need to improve your commentary. Otherwise, I'll be on Pant, Pant Mike commentary altogether. And it's just, he's enjoying his cricket again. And you could see that the pressure had taken its toll on him. And I mean, just so glad that he's he's come out of that that funk and just brilliant to watch him. Just so, so pleased for him. Yeah, really, really well said. Excited for the, the, the young man. Excited for all the young players who have featured in this test series, in the last test series. But the T20 series kicks off in four days from the time of release of this episode. So Friday on which we have five T20s. England is arguably a much stronger limited oversight at the moment than they are test side, at least in Asia. We won't talk into too much details of that. We've talked about the squad a little bit. I'm just going to ask you both for predictions. So, Varun, five T20s coming up. What is the scoreline going to be between India and England? 3-2 to India. DJ, what's your prediction? I'm going to go the other way. I think England are a very, very strong T20 team. I think we're going to lose 2-3. It'll be a close series. It'll be exciting. But unlike the test matches where England haven't actually played their best team, some would argue, and some are already arguing that they where they sent Josh Butler back home and Moin Ali has gone back home and all of that was building towards the white ball leg of this tour because England's focus is very much white ball given the upcoming World Cups. And I think there's some level of excuse making there as well. But this is going to be an explosive, explosive, full strength England team. It's going to be hard to beat them, man. They're world champions in the ODI game. They made the last T20 World Cup final only to lose in the last over by some brilliance by Carlos Brathwaite. But um, it's going to be tough. So I'm going to go with England. Although it hurts me. It hurts me um, to do it. But I'm going to go against our boys on this one. So Varun's predicting India win 3-2. DJ's predicting England win 3-2. I'm going to lean in and predict go with Varun as well. I'm going to say 3-2, but I'm going to say it's going to be 2-all. And then in the final T20, it goes down to a wire. There's a tie, there's a super over that ends in a tie. And then India wins because we had one, one extra boundary over England over the course of the series. So I know the boundary count rule has been discontinued, but I'm still assuming and hoping that that's what happens. Right. Lots happening in the world of T20 as well. Varun, let me quickly ask you, you, you know, Yuvraj has historically been one of your favorite players. Kyron Pollard, this past week, set another record against Sri Lanka that Yuvraj previously held. And that was hitting six sixes in the in one over of an international T20 game. This guy never seems to, to get old, never seems to run out of energy, and never seems to run out of steam, right? Yeah, he's quality. Even you know, in the middle when Mumbai Indians used to keep picking him, no matter what, I sometimes questioned why. But he's, he's just a quality batsman. Kyron Pollard, brilliant six sixes, but I do feel bad for Akila Dhananjay. Like, imagine the mind games that he went through. He took a hat trick the previous <laughs> over and then got hit for 36 runs in the next over. So, it, it was, you know, you got to feel for him, but great company for uh, Yuvraj Singh to have Kyron Pollard there. Herschel Gibbs is the only one who's hit it in ODI, and he let everyone know that through his Twitter account that there's no competition in ODIs yet. But uh, really good to see that. Yeah, and that's what we love about the sport, right? We're talking about test cricket where it's a grind, where it's playing out overs, leaving the ball, and then we're gonna we're all quickly pivoting to T twenty mode and watching six sixes and you know, the PSL unfortunately was abandoned uh, because of COVID nineteen unfortunate spread. So it just reminds us of how the difficult times we live in and hopefully sports can continue to maintain bio bubbles until this, you know, is this issue is globally is brought under control. But meanwhile, the IPL has been announced. DJ, April 9th, I, how pumped are you, right? It's usually our favorite time of year. Varun has been mostly excited about getting two IPLs within seven months and it's happening. It's becoming a reality. Yeah, super excited. Of course, the games have been moved around. I don't think Chennai or Delhi get any home games this time, which I don't know whether it's a bad thing for Delhi, actually. <laughs> we seem to be doing pretty well away from home at the moment. But very excited. I mean, very thankful. You mentioned the PSL. I mean, um, it's been in the news recently because of the Dale Stain comment saying he likes to play in the PSL rather than the IPL. But I mean, that getting cancelled shows you how precarious the situation is, right? One COVID infection and the entire thing gets called off. And I mean, the BCCI, the IPL organizing committee, everyone involved with it has just done such a brilliant job to make sure these test matches are going off without a hitch. The IPL went off completely without a hitch in a bio bubble. It's been super hard on the players. Let's remember that as well. I mean, Ravi Shastri talked about, I think he mentioned the word bubble like 50 times in a three-second 
clip and he was just like it's so hard being in this bubble and players have been in this bubble for more than 6 to 8 months now and i mean I, we should just be thankful as fans to have the ability to watch cricket in these crazy times i mean we're seeing the end of covid hopefully with vaccinations and things going around but uh, i mean just very very excited our favorite teams will be back there out there playing cricket and yeah the ipl siren every time it goes off there's a little shiver of excitement that uh, goes down our spines right brilliant love it love it well said and that pretty much it that brings us to a wrap for this week's episode of edges and sledges as you all know those who've been listening we are running a great contest in partnership with our sponsor siat where you have to answer a question with the hashtag bat with siat on twitter we already announced our first winner for february very excited for march our question is who is the only bowler to have taken 400 test wickets in fewer test matches than ravi chandran ashwin name the bowler and how many tests he took to get to the 400 test wicket landmark make sure you tweet that out with the hashtag #batwithciat and we will run our next contest at the end of march again gentlemen it's been fun covering the test series we are ready now to pivot i don't think india plays another test until the wtc final basically and we're ready for t20 mode t20 5 t20s against england the ipl starts soon it has been a great ride we could not be more excited for the the boys to be back in blue we will bring you another episode next week as always until then join us on twitter facebook instagram at one tip one hand and check out our discord server we're always around to engage with cricket and we will see you all next week this is edges and sledges brought to you by cia tires drive safe guys working monday to friday glued to your chair making you feel dull worry not get your 5 minute weekly dose of travel around the world with postcards from nowhere join me every thursday as i explore the strange obscure and fascinating parts of the world and bring out facets of travel you may not have thought of before you can find us on the ibm podcast app website or wherever you get your podcast from whether you're an established sports person or a budding one or simply a sports enthusiast join us tanvi and shlok we are two passionate pro badminton players talking policy mindset and everything sport so tune in to the millennial athlete every monday only on the ibm podcast network trust us it's going to be lit